All right, in this demonstration, I want to show you how you can use an array at, with an array loop, the for each loop, so that you can build an option select form. There are lots of different types of forms that you can create um, and lots of different input types. I'm just going to cover the option select. Uh, it's a pretty, you know, normal one. It's a drop down with a, a submit button. Um, but just so you know, there's a lot of stuff about forms that um, I'm only going to touch on a little bit of it, but there's a lot more to forms. So first thing that I'm going to talk about is a little bit about Dreamweaver and forms. So, so far we've been doing, you know, everything in code view. One of the things that Dreamweaver doesn't do very well in code view is it doesn't create forms very well in code view. It'll allow you to use, um, It'll allow you to use some of the insert tools for a form. You have to make sure that your insert is selected on form uh, for the form option. And if I started to build something here, I would put the form tag, and you see it's doing it for me. But then I would want to you know, choose the select type. And you see it's still doing it for me, but what you're going to notice in a minute is that this is really not adequate. I want it to build a proper form that would be ADA accessible and have all the right stuff built into the syntax. In order for that to happen, you need to go into the design view. You can either click straight away into the design view, or if you want, you could also do a split view. It's really up to you how you want to do this. I'll do a split view so that you can see in live action what's going on. Okay, so while my cursor is in the design view, uh, uh, window up here, I'm going to go back over here to my insert panel. And if you don't see this, you can go up to window and then choose insert. Okay, so I'm going to go to insert, make sure that form is selected as your options list. And then I'm going to first create the generic form tag. Okay, and then automatically you can see that it put a whole bunch more stuff in there. That's good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do while my uh, cursor is inside of here in the code view, you might be tempted to do that. Make sure that you keep your cursor inside of the form in the display view. Okay, so now I want to go and insert and create a select uh, input. Okay, and you see uh, again automatically it just created a bunch of other stuff that it didn't do for me, like it put name, ID, all this stuff. It also put a label tag, which is exactly what, what you definitely want for ADA accessibility. Okay, and then after that, in my display view, I want to go ahead and put insert a, a submit button, because you can't do anything without a submit button. Uh, so we'll find the submit. Don't just choose button, make sure it's submit button. Okay. And then you could put some other stuff like reset or whatever, but we're just going to stick with the simple form right now. Okay, now I'm going to open this up a little bit more. And now we've got the basic um, anatomy of our form down here. I don't need to really look at this any longer up here. I'm just going to go back into the code view. And let me explain some of the basic anatomy of what we have here in this form. And just so it's really easy to see, I'm going to drop it down. So we have the opening form tag and the closing form tag. So the opening form tag has a lot of information in it, has the ID for the form. Um, for the most part, uh, you definitely want an ID for forms so that you can target them if you need to. Um, forms should always be unique. So let's just call this, um, well, we can call it form one. It doesn't matter. It's the only form on the page, but it should have some sort of ID. Now, where it comes to name, name and ID, a lot of people will confuse the two. They are not the same things. ID is used for, obviously you know that it's used for CSS. It's also used for target uh, anchor links if you wanted to be able to jump to that form by clicking a link somewhere else, you could jump to that form directly. Um, but name is I, I sort of, I, it's sort of a misnomer in my opinion. I wish that this was called key because really that's what it's about. The name attribute in a form provides the key uh, for information if you were going to put it into an array. Okay, so that's what that means. Method, all right, your method is going to be post or get typically for forms and you can just leave that as post for right now. We'll talk about the difference between post and get, but just leave that as post right now.
All right, and then inside of the form, we have some other stuff. Okay, so when we put the select, um, the select input here, it automatically also created a label ahead of it for us. That's really important for um, accessibility purposes because uh, if you can imagine being a blind person trying to fill out a form that didn't have any labels attached to it and you don't know if you're supposed to be putting your name in or if you're supposed to be putting a description in or a credit card number or what. So that's what these labels are for. So what, whenever you see something that says label, um, it's always going to have a four attribute or it should always have a four attribute. And the value of that four attribute is always going to be the target ID so that it knows how to match up this label with this particular input type, all right, or this particular input ID. So if I were to change the name of select, let's say that I'm, I'm gonna have a bunch of options inside of it that are for search engines. So let's say that I'm gonna call this engines, okay? If I change that, might as well go ahead and change the name as well. They technically don't have to be the same, the name and the ID, but it makes it a lot easier if they are. So if I were to change uh, that, then I also have to go up here and change the label for, it's no longer select, it's the label for engines. Otherwise, it won't validate properly and it would confuse somebody a lot. And then while I'm at it, I can go ahead and say, um, search engines, okay? And so then what we're going to have is a label that shows up. And if we wanna look at the split view now, we can. And you see, I click up here and it says search engines. We don't have anything in here yet inside of the options. And then we've got our submit. And if you wanted, you could even say on the screen, select a search engine. How about that? Let's do that. Okay. And then we know what, what it is that we're trying to tell people to do. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and we're going to select the select input. And you can do this either in the code view or you can do it up here in the display view. So select the drop down looking icon up here in the display view if you want to do it that way. Um, and then we're going to go uh, over, not to insert, we're going to go to our properties. And if you don't see your properties panel showing up, you can always go up here to window and then choose properties. And then what we need to do is you see where it says selected, we're going to click on list values. and Mine showed up somewhere else. Okay, there. Um, and then we're going to create some options that would be available in the drop down. So we're going to create the first one, the label that you're going to see on the screen. Let's just say that it's a uh, Google. And let's give it the value of HTTP and then go to google.com. All right. And if we want to create another one, we can use this little WYSIWYG button thing and we'll do Yahoo. HTTP, oops, yahoo.com. And finally, let's uh, let's just do Bing, okay? And HTTP, bing.com. Okay, and I'll hit OK. And then you see what it did was it automatically populated all these options for me. And you see the way that the option tags are, are created is it has option, and then you'll see an attribute called value. Now, one of the things about a lot of inputs is that the input will have, it won't have all these options that are, you know, embedded within it. It'll have like, it'll have value as part of its uh, tag. Well, that's not the way that the select input is. It has options that are nested inside of it and the options are where it des determines the value. Um, because what, whichever one of these gets chosen, that's what the value is going to be. Okay, the value of what? The value of the key. Remember I told you anytime you see in a form something that says name, you might as well just think of it as the word key, all right? Because key is going to be, uh, it's going, engines is going to be the key, and the value is whichever thing gets selected so that like let's say it selects uh, Yahoo, the value then would be paired up with that key of engines. 
Okay, so let's look at how we can uh, do this. Let's go ahead and save this real quick. And I want to show you before we even get into any of the PHP stuff. Um, actually, I do want to show you one PHP thing. This form won't do anything right now. All right, it's just a form that's sitting on the page and it literally does nothing. You could click submit and it would do nothing because it doesn't have an action assigned to it. In the actual introduction form tag is where you're going to have an action. Okay, so you can add an action one of two ways. You could either click on uh, right inside of that tag and type action like this, right? And then put some kind of value. That's one way that you could do it, okay? Another way in Dreamweaver that you can do it is if you um, go ahead and select the form. Well, I should say select the whole form. You can uh, also go to the properties and I'll hit refresh and you see that it has an action right here. It also has like a little file folder so if you have a script file that you want to run as the action you could do that but what we're going to do is we're going to reload the current page okay and I want to show you the way that the post or the get method work. Okay so in this action I could also go up here and I could type some PHP tags like this all right, and then whenever I come down here, it refreshes it. And you see now I've got action, and it's got my PHP tags right there. All right, now what do we want to put inside the PHP tags? I want to echo the current page. And the way, if you remember back to what we've done before, you can use a server super global variable. So I can go here and I can start to type server. And then for the key, I want the key to be. No, I could actually, let's just do this. And if so that you can look at all the options, I want the key to be PHP self, right? And so what it's going to do is it's going to, uh, let me put the terminator there. It's going to refresh the page basically, but it's going to not just refresh it. It's actually going to submit whenever I click the submit button. So I'm going to save this real quickly. And I want to just show you over here. This is my page. I'm going to re hit refresh. And this is my form. And right now I haven't made any arrays or anything. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to show you before I go much further is I want to go show you in the Google Chrome Inspector. So I'm going to right click and say Inspect Element. It doesn't matter where you click. And I'm going to go over here to where it says Network. Okay. And you see that there's nothing going on right now. Right. There's nothing there. As soon as I go up here and I choose something and I hit submit, you see that now under network, I get a behavior. I get an action, not a behavior, an action. And it tells me what the method was. It was post. And if I click on this particular page that it just loaded, it gives me a lot of information about that page. It gives me the headers. It gives me all of this stuff about where it came from, the host, the origin, blah, 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 the refer page. All this stuff, but then at the very bottom you see something that says form data, and it has the number two. And what it says then is it's got the word engines, and then it has a value of HTTP forward slash uh, forward slash yahoo.com, and then also it says submit equals submit. Well, that is the key. Those are two key value pairs that were sent with what's referred to as the post super global variable. So. Whenever you look at a form and it talks about what the method is, whether it's post or get or whatever, post is a super global variable, um, just like server is, um, and so is get. And when I say it's a super global variable, it's a super global array because it is an, it's going to be capturing all of the data that is being sent in this form. It's going to capture it. And it's going to store it inside of that super global array and pass the information along in an array form to the, the next page. All right. And the next page in this case is going to be itself. All right. And this is the information that got captured when it sent it to itself. And so that's kind of cool. And what it means is that I could do something at the very top of this page to filter to see whether or not the post variable exists. All right, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can build the array and also filter this so that you can tell whether or not the 
form has been submitted.